Prophetess Debile, 7750 Media. News on Pushy Dan is that she is now Pushy Watson. She is a pastor who has devoted herself to God and to her children. It states that her first marriage came tumbling down in 2017 amid rumors of infidelity. And it is stated that she was embarrassed as the story was all over the newspapers. But it is from these failures and imperfections and adversities that God grooms us into our better selves. Again, I am not interested in celebrity gossip. But I was talking about South Africa's law enforcement in the cases of identity fraud. And though Pushy was one who was subjected to a deportation, she has come into her calling from that adversity. And it is now some... 24 years later. Living in one's authentic identity that, ha- that God has given enables the individual to tap into who they really are, working from inside out and also working out their gifts and their talents and giving them back to God. It could be a single gift or talent or a multiplicity of them. It is usually a chain of events and experiences that leads people to their destiny. And since I have been called by the South African police detective, after being accused of making threats that I have never made, I must just let God the creative, living expression of his voice in me, do what he wants to do in my life and with my life and my circumstances. Any deportation that takes place also comes about by the key of David. The word deportation has a context in the nativity of the Lord Jesus, who was born in Bethlehem, Judea in the time of King Herod, who sought to kill him when he was an infant. This is why I keep saying that God uses triggers to to prompt me into the next thing. Matthew chapter 1, verses 16 to 17 in the LSB says, And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Therefore, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon is 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ is 14 generations. The dictionary meaning of deportation is, one, the lawful expulsion of an alien or other person from a country. Two, an act or instance of deporting. Three, it is the act of transporting someone from his country, and therefore banishment. Somewhere in my diary notes, and around the time that I was being told to go and trade my body to make money out of prostitution, so round about the 22nd of January, 2018, I simply asked, if the divorce documents that I had been threatened with for years on end were ready. At that point in time, I was being told something, something or the other about clientele legal who were working on the documents. I have been saying that only by the signature of triple eight will I get God's perfect resolution of this matter. In July of 2018, Instead of the divorce that I was being told about all these other years, I got sued at the magistrate court 
on trumped up charges. One of the accusations against me at the time, as it was articulated to myself, was that I was threatening people with deportation. Now, here's a question. If you don't want the police coming after you, or any law enforcement agencies in any capacity scrutinizing anything about you, why keep insisting on using the letter of the law and the same law enforcement agencies to enforce your own rights while you are trampling on someone else's rights to just exist? First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 in the voice speaks about boasting in circumstances where incest has occurred. And it says, don't you understand that the tiniest infraction can bring about an unwelcome chain of events? The Bible is very clear that if you dig a pit for someone else, you will fall into it because you've dug the pit. So then you must go into it yourself. Proverbs chapter 26 Verse 27 to 28 says, The one who digs a trap for another will fall into it. The one who starts rolling a stone will have it roll back over them. Liars take no pity on those they crush with their lies, and flattery spoils everyone it touches. Proverbs 27, 1, that follows from there, says, Don't brag about what may happen tomorrow, because you have no idea what it will bring. You Have No Idea is the title of Vanessa Williams' book, and I hear her voice now. You went and saved the best for last. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6 says, Wounds inflicted by the correction of a friend prove he is faithful, but the abundant kisses of an enemy show his lies. Verse 8 says, like a bird that has fallen from its nest is the one dislodged from his home. These scriptures are being given to me at certain times as I move through my life and what God is working out and bringing forth out of it. Remember that the Bible says that Job Job feared and his fears were visited upon him in one day. So I recorded what the Lord wanted me to record in writing in my diary note. The gospel of the deportations according to the King Messiah born in Bethlehem, Judea. When Vanessa Williams was asked why she didn't follow through on suing Penthouse magazine, for publishing the unauthorized nude photographs of herself, she said that her own lawyer told her that the litigation would inquire into her past, such as the molestation when she was a child, and they would even dig up the dirt on stuff like her teenage pregnancy and abortion when she was in high school. And she felt that if this were to be part of the legal process, it would do more damage to her reputation and her character during the trial. So she chose the high road of suffering the injustice. But as according to God's laws, she gained the higher victory in that she has told her story. So she did not give away her power. She told her story, not just in her book, but she she tells it also in her interviews, because in this way, she is also imparting what she has learned to others and to the younger generation that are coming up behind her. At the bottom of her book, it says, a famous daughter, her no-nonsense mother, and how they survived pageants, Hollywood, love, loss, and each other. When I finished writing out what the Lord said about Job's fears coming down on him, I heard 
boys to men, rendering end of the road. The end of the road refers to a conclusion, a termination, an ending, or a death of something. And one thing that I've learned in my time as well is that divorce and death are synonymous in the context that I have been discussing what I have been discussing. And that is the fact that I am in a difficult situation and the Lord is the one that said to me, he would work it out because it is not up to me to do it. So let me leave it here for now. Thank you for listening.